Hey man, can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Uh, we're in like the middle of Florida. Uh oh. So hopefully this works. Oh, there he goes. He's gone. Are you gonna talk to me for a minute or two? Got a haircut. That's what this video is about. You look silly right now because it's not it's, styled. It's also all chlorine. -y. Swam this morning, about to hop on the bike. We're gonna do some early season baseline testing on the bike. We're trying to capture baselines for different thresholds in my cycling fitness. That all sounds right. Kind of just look at my coach for this stuff. Recording in progress. Oh, there you go. I'm also I'm filming you too. from this angle. We're doing this protocol with all of our athletes. The test is... Man, look at your... Yeah. Over your shoulder. After about 30 minutes of warming up, we're doing a three minute test holding the even power. See what your max average power is for three minutes. Then again, kind of cooling down, warming up into a 12 minute all out test, seeing how even and averaged your highest power output can be for 12 minutes. If you get a sense of your, your power curve, you know, the X axis is like the time for each max interval that you're doing and Y is the power. People have different shaped curves. We're getting a sense of your power curve and then we want to look at, you know, if there's something strange or you're an outlier in some way. I like the house analogy. You're going to be limited by like the next threshold above that. So like even as triathletes who do like super long core stuff in order to get better they need to raise that ceiling that like high-end fitness ceiling in order to progress in their like efficiency lower level thresholds at a certain point you know you have to adjust training to continue to progress uh, your fitness so in a few months after this next block of high-end fitness training we can see how much I improved from these baselines and that will dictate the next block of training. Doing a three minute and 12 minute, you can get a sense of your strengths, your weaknesses. We're trying to figure out what my critical power is. The direction of coaching and exercise science is sort of towards this critical power concept. The critical power is just a little bit harder than FTP. Like things are really hard, but if I needed to, I can hold this for a while even though it really sucks. We often talk about FTP as your 60 minute peak power, like how much power can you hold for, for 60 minutes? And that's pretty darn close to critical power. It's good to be precise. But then you add like an extra five, 10 watts on that, you can see your body physically deteriorating. Whenever you're actually above critical power, like your oxygen consumption will actually continue to increase and when it really necessarily even out. I have a good idea of what I think I can hold for 12 minutes. Three minutes is a different area for me. At the end of the day, all of this is useful for tracking and testing and manipulating training. But at the end of the, at the, end of the day, you have to feel it and you have to sort of be confident in, in, in what you're feeling. I've never done a three minute test before. It'll be interesting. Think of it as like a, a three minute all out in the water. Or yeah. a, a 300, a I guess. A 300, which is a really shitty weird. distance. <laughs> it's a weird distance, too. All right, True. so we're going to go up to the arena. Yeah, the, where are we? The testing arena. So when Jenna and I do key bike workouts or tests or whatever, we like to set up a little stadium atmosphere for our rides. Gather a crowd. So, new location today. The drama. So because 
I don't really care about this bike anymore. Well, this is my trainer bike. Officially? Officially. Well, I shouldn't say that officially. <laughs> there are plenty of strip screws in this and I don't bother to try to fix it anymore. So you should have seen me. I was just manually twisting these things. Well, that can't be good for you. I just stack anyways. Give me something. Average 420. How'd that feel? There's nothing like it. Started out up here. Yeah. And then a slow decline. All right, so here it is. You can sort of see it at a curve. You got after it. Which is what I told myself I did not want to do. So that is an indication that potentially, you know, if you paced yourself better, you could have held more than 420. You went for it. I went for it. 30 seconds in, I was like, oh, yeah. And then another 30 seconds goes by. You're like, that took a lot longer than the first 30. And then with about a minute 45 to go, everything started to blow up. That's why we're doing it though. Mm -hmm. Doing it to learn. I might hop off and do a really quick dynamic stretch before the next one. Okay. That was intense. Yeah, you seem tired. All right, he's got his 12 minute coming up.
as we step out the cage. We raising all of the stakes. Made no mistake. Either you stay in your place or we put in you on a plate. Look at our face. We put the fear in the dirt. We had to struggle for change. Pick up the pace. We put in infinite work. That's why we stay getting paid. Y'all running late. We moving on to the next. You still been stuck in the phase. This no debate. We draw the line in the sand. We say it straight to your face. They underrate. So we put the team on our back. We took the city to state. What it's gonna take? Another S on our chest. Another beat in the grave. We in the vein. We always switching it up. They can't predict what we say. Come out the cave. They see the blood on our shirt. They see the teeth in the face. They watching tape. Still trying to figure us out. They think we came in a play. They send the snakes. They trying to give us a curse. Ain't no more running away. They trying to trace. They trying to follow our steps. They trying to copy the way. Boy, that's your name. That's why they keep getting curved. You got to stay in your lane. They want to claim that we not giving them work. Like this is minimum. next year if people have not figured that one out based on this conversation what? <laughs> so because i'm so transparent with all of my training and all of my numbers we're basically going to share how to beat me i really think it's fine to share it <laughs> go ahead do the work yeah, yeah. to make that happen engine definitely would help to have another 20 watts especially when we think about competing with top athletes out there For the 12 minute effort, he averaged 356. <laughs> and that was pretty darn even. So you paced this really well. <laughs> Too much effort going forwards? Now we know you know, how your three minute peak power sort of relates to your 12 minute peak power. Critical power is 334, FTP was calculated at 321. Basically, it would be great if we could increase it by 10 watts, but you're, you're already there. Five minutes in, I looked at the timer, that's where I went to a dark place. I thought I was just gonna stop right there. I could tell. Aerobically, you're, you're really fit right now, and we haven't done a lot of high-end fitness work, but at this point, it's good to get a baseline. Yeah. I'm glad I don't have to do that for a while. Good. Me too. Wow, look at this setup. Not bad. That's all done. Now we're gonna go for a run. It is essential for us to pay attention to all of this. Once you reach a certain level of fitness, you have to consider all of this even more. None of this gets easier. Your body is more capable of doing it, it still sucks. <laughs> it can also backfire and cause certain athletes to almost lose their passion if you know they're only focused on the numbers and not enjoying training, not enjoying just moving their bodies. But it's important to know this. And for you, 
you want to compete at the highest level and you need to be precise but you know we know how to do it we know how to get you there and you're training exactly what you need to meet the demands of the race itself <laughs>